So today we're talking about the weird things that toxic families do when you decide to go no contact. So toxic families are made up of toxic family members. So a toxic person is someone who isn't afraid to give you their opinion of you, even though it's a faulty opinion of you. In healthy families, there are boundaries. Children feel safe. Family members feel safe. In a healthy family, you're able to come to the matriarch of the family and tell them how you feel. If you have an issue, you know that your needs are going to be supported rather than be criticized and demonized. You feel like you are wanted, that you're part of a system that encourages your personal growth. So even if you don't agree with the people in your family, your opinions matter. But this isn't the case when you come from a toxic family. Toxic family members exploit other family members. Toxic family members criticize one another. Toxic families may have an addiction issue happening within the family unit, but in a toxic family, we're not allowed to talk about that addiction issue. There might be a gambling issue, an alcoholic issue, or a drug issue, not allowed to talk about it. When you come from a toxic family, there's the no talk rule. You can see it, you can think it, but you're not allowed to say it. In a toxic family, there's the no feel rule. You can see it, you can think it, but you're not allowed to feel anything. You're not allowed to express those emotions. You're not allowed to have an authentic reaction. In a toxic family system, you can't think your own thoughts. You know it, even though no one's ever said that to you, you know that if you go against what your mom says or your father says or what your narcissistic brother or sister says, you know that you're going to pay the price. So when you're in a toxic family system, there's no room for authenticity. Everybody's hypervigilant. Everybody's waiting for the next shoe to drop. There's a lot of arguing, a lot of criticizing, a lot of crosstalk. There's absolutely no boundaries and you don't feel safe in a toxic family system. Just like with any person who is toxic or narcissistic, a toxic family member is unable to accept what is perhaps a character flaw and with, within themselves. And so what they do then is that they usually pick a scapegoat. They usually pick somebody who is the weakest link, somebody who appears vulnerable, somebody who is easy to push around, someone who's not going to bite back. And they'll project those flaws onto, let's say, a scapegoat in the family. What you'll notice is that your perception of you does not match the perception that this toxic family member has of you. So many of my clients, including myself, have this reality where you have a narcissistic mom or a narcissistic dad or even a sibling or an aunt or an uncle who is accusing you of things that you are not guilty of. And within your soul, you're like, that's just not true. You don't know me. And it's very painful because if you're not careful, you end up becoming someone who is looking for this person who is taking advantage of you you end up looking to please this person in an effort to get them to see you the way that you prefer to be seen, which of course is the crux of codependency, looking for validation. Another sign that you have a toxic family member is that they lack empathy for you. So this family member just has no boundaries when it comes to speaking about you, comes to speaking to you. And what you'll notice if your family's really in the thick of it is that nobody sticks up for you. Nobody says anything. In fact, they work to hide what's really happening. So they support the person who is taking advantage of you. And that can make you feel really alone and as if you don't matter to the people that should be loving you and taking care of you. Toxic family members play dumb. So there it is right in front of you. Perhaps your brother came, came in drunk again, but everyone's acting like he didn't. Maybe there were some really disgusting things said, but when you look around the kitchen table or you look around the apartment, Nobody is acknowledging what really happened. It's almost like the narcissist in the room is given a pass because everybody else is just afraid of speaking the truth. So you become a casualty as the truth teller, as the cycle breaker, as the scapegoat. Toxic family members are highly narcissistic. So this means just like with any narcissistic person, they're not going to take accountability. They're not going to take responsibility. And just like when you're dealing with a single narcissist, when you're dealing with a toxic family, it can feel so much worse because the entire family system is rooted in denial and no one is willing to go up against this narcissist except for you. And when you do this, you're threatening the entire family system, whether dad's an alcoholic or mom's a narcissist, 
when you're dealing with a toxic family, what ends up happening is they end up protecting the person that you are saying, hey, knock it off. Hey, you shouldn't treat me that way. So don't be surprised if your family's toxic that your siblings don't turn on you when you start telling the truth. Another thing that a toxic family member will do and a toxic family tolerates is gaslighting. And so there you are minding your own business and something happens in the family and you say, hey, I don't like that. Or why did you take my shoes out of my closet and not return them? Where are the new shoes I just bought? So there you are you are calling your sister out for taking your shoes, which is something that she does. She lacks responsibility for it. Mom doesn't say anything. Dad doesn't say anything because your sister is over the top accusatory and turns things on you and pretty much a narcissist. And she's trained everybody to not confront her. And so here you are like, where are my shoes? I worked all month to buy these shoes and now they're gone. So you come out a simple truth. A simple truth will upset a toxic family system. Hey, where are the shoes that you took? You have a habit of doing this and I want my shoes back. Now, if your family is really toxic, they're not going to side with you. They're going to side with your sister. They're going to do everything that they can to support her behavior. Why? Because your sister has trained them to be afraid of going up against them. And this is really a shame because this is how families stay in this toxicity. This is how families remain asleep. This is how a family will keep a child highly narcissistic. Perhaps both your parents were codependent and didn't know how to deal with this sister of you who is just really pushing everybody around and really pushing the limits. And unfortunately, when the leaders of a family aren't taking responsibility, no different than the leaders of a company who allow their employees to run amok, when there is a problem with leadership, there's a problem within the company. When there's a problem with leadership, with the parents, there's a problem within the family system. So you dear one, as a cycle breaker, as a truth teller, as someone who can't unsee the truth, you end up being sacrificed to keep the secret alive. So when you go no contact, when you say enough is enough, these are some of the things that might happen if you come from a toxic family system. You will be accused of making things up. So don't be surprised if you hear from family, friends and relatives, or just people on the block that you have been accused of making things up. So this is triangulation. And the purpose of triangulation is to hedge your bets. In other words, like if your mom's afraid that you're going to start telling the neighbors about her toxic behavior, then your mom, if she's toxic enough, is going to throw you under the bus. She's going to start saying that, oh, my daughter's always been emotional or very emotional. My daughter's always been a liar. She's ha she has a habit of making things up. She tends to be very dramatic. She's going through something. Her hormones are all over the place. So you'll be accused of making things up. Your parents will triangulate against you in an effort to keep their secrets secrets. Another thing that a toxic family will do, which I think is very odd, but it happens is they start digging into your past and don't be surprised if they look up an ex on Facebook who you accused of taking advantage of you. And don't be surprised if this person comes to lunch and mom and dad or your sister and your brother are hanging out with this person at the park because what they're trying to do is keep their family secret a secret. You are a threat. The truth is a threat to a sick, toxic family system. And so anything that they can do to kind of like disparage your name, anything that they could do to discredit you, they're going to do it. So siding with someone who has taken advantage of you in the past, coming up with a storyline, supporting them, what they're doing is they're gaining sides. In other words, they're gaining warriors against you. So the more people against you, the more you stand alone, the more you look like you're the one with the problem, which means that whatever's coming out of your mouth, can't be true or it shouldn't be trusted. Unfortunately, your desire for wanting to tell the truth, your desire for maybe wanting for dad to go into therapy or wanting your siblings to understand mom's narcissism, it's going to be twisted. Your efforts are going to be turned into something that it's not. They're going to take everything that you say and make it sound something horrible. They're going to bring up things that you did when you were 12. They're going to say that you just can't get over things. They're going to say that you have a vendetta. So your desire to truly help your family member, maybe who is struggling with alcoholism or drug addiction or even narcissism, your desire to like breathe a breath of fresh air into this sick system 
is going to be twisted. And if you're not careful, what will end up happening is you'll start to feel really bad about yourself, especially if you're in a sick family system that just gaslights everybody all over the place. Anytime they dare to tell the truth that can mess with your head and you can think maybe I am wrong. Maybe this is a vendetta. Maybe I do make a big deal out of nothing. Maybe this is something that I should just pretend doesn't exist. You'll start to question yourself. And that's a big red flag. If you're questioning yourself, if you really feel strongly about something and your family, everybody in your family is going against you and you feel like it's a cover up to hide an addiction issue or a lack of boundary issue, then you need to be really, really careful. And it's imperative that you put distance between you and the family members who are wanting to gaslight you and cause you to doubt your perception because your perception, dear one, is threatening the family system. And unfortunately you can't control someone's level of consciousness. And sadly, many family members, if you come from a sick, toxic family, everybody's drinking the Kool-Aid. They don't even know they're drinking the Kool-Aid. So they're living below the veil of consciousness. They're hypervigilant. They're afraid of upsetting your mom, upsetting your dad, or making the narcissist in the family angry. They don't know how to deal with the truth. They're working through all of these ego defense mechanisms. And the reality is that you're just more able to see the truth. You're, you're much more further along in terms of healthy recovery and part of recovery. Huge part of recovery is telling the truth. It's, it's, you're only as sick as your secrets, as they say, and you as someone who's willing to look at the secret and talk about the secret is oftentimes met with disdain and met with retaliation when you're dealing with a toxic family system. Another thing that a toxic family will do is they'll twist it on you and tell and accuse you of just wanting to hurt people. So here you are, all you want to do is help people. All you want to do is perhaps help the person who is sick in your family and you'll be accused of actually wanting to hurt people. And if you're not careful, dear one, that could really hurt you emotionally. So be wary of that and know that if your words are getting twisted, this is why you've decided to go no contact in the first place. Another thing that you'll be accused of is you'll hear things like you're just unforgiving. You can't get over the past. You hold on to the past. No one could ever please you. You don't appreciate the good. You are ungrateful. Toxic families are notorious for twisting things on you and accusing you of being ungrateful, accusing you of being unappreciative, accusing you of just being stuck in the past. So, your effort to say, I see this will be marred by them accusing you of wanting to hurt people. Be, you'll be accused of just not being grateful enough. And if you're not careful again, if you're really not careful and you miss the sign, if you don't see this as a toxic behavior, it's very easy for you to get swept up by that and worry about what your family thinks about you and even question your intention. I think one of the most important things to remember is that you are a threat to a toxic family system. The truth is a threat to a toxic family system. I've had clients who have told their mothers about things that they were having to deal with, with their dad or their stepfather. And the moms just never say that again. You know, you're disgusting for even saying that. And here my client is like shunned for telling the truth and guilted and ashamed of telling the truth. Where does the child go? What resource does a child have when their own family doesn't support the truth? when their own family causes them to feel ashamed for telling the truth. What happens to you as a little girl or as a little boy when the people that you love are telling you that what you went through didn't even happen? This is very damaging and that is trauma. And as a result, many of us end up going underground ourselves. We live in denial. We were never taught to actually accept our feelings and process our emotions. We were taught to repress them. Well, actually the mind will do that by itself. That's automatic. What I can't accept and process, I repress. But what's a little bit more conscious is suppression. So if I feel like I should speak up, I will suppress it because my toxic family taught me that doing that, I'm going to be retaliated against. So to avoid that pain, I just suppress and suppress until I'm in my mid thirties and about my mid thirties, I find that that's about the time when people start to really have cracks in their bodies, cracks in their mind, cracks in, in the way that they live. Like you just can't hold this in your emotional body anymore. You get asthma, you get eczema, you get IBS, you have fertility issues, or you just start to emotionally feel like you can't handle the weight of these lies anymore. And I personally think that that's a beautiful point 
in our life because those are our breakthrough moments. So for me, my breakdowns always led to breakthroughs, but this is a painful process. So I'm just hoping that this session really helps anyone out there who's wondering like, is this a toxic family that I'm dealing with or is it me? What are the signs of a toxic family? How do I know that my family is toxic and how do I know that going no contact was the right thing for me? If you've experienced any of this, especially the gaslighting aspect of it, you are absolutely on the right path for going no contact. And unfortunately, toxic families are going to blame you for wanting to have healthy relationships. They're going to judge you for wanting to pull away from the family system. And if you think about it, every time you leave a, a toxic family system, what you're saying to the toxic family system is, I can't do this anymore. How they perceive it is you're a threat to them because you become the light. You become a mirror because if someone escapes, then the people inside are like, what's wrong with us? And a toxic family system is very narcissistic in that there's nothing wrong with us. What's wrong is the person who wants to say that there's something wrong with us. And just like with typical narcissism, when you confront someone who is highly narcissistic, you will be marginalized, you will be demonized, and you will be ostracized, and you will be abandoned from the toxic family system. I say it's better to acknowledge this and go no contact and decide to look within and heal yourself, dear one, heal yourself, break free of the trauma of the past, break free of the chains of the past. And in time, as you learn to love yourself, as you learn to have compassion for yourself, you will discover that the people that resonate with that vibe, vibe begin to show up, but you have to have faith in that process. If you'd like help with your healing journey, please check out the 12 Week Breathe Coaching Program. This is specifically designed for people who are struggling with abandonment trauma, who have grown up feeling rejected and invisible. It's especially created for people who have come from toxic family systems like adult children of alcoholics, adult children of narcissistic parents. 12 Week Breathe Coaching Program is designed to help you access the emotions that other people taught you to suppress and deny and taught you to believe through the way that they treated you that how you felt was unimportant. So it will help you reconnect to your inner child and help you reconnect with your divine self so that you can live an integrated full life and begin attracting the love, the hope, the abundance, the careers, the people, and the vibe tribe that you always deserved. Namaste everybody, until next time. If Bye. you love this content, don't forget to check out the next video and you can go to my website and take the codependency quiz.